Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another amazing geometry node. And this time we're looking at rain, and we've made a geometry node here that is so easy to use in any of your scenes that you're really going to want to check it out. And be sure to stay to the end guys because there's some really, really important information as we go through this tutorial of how to use this geometry node that you will need to know. All right, with all that said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this file. This is the file that you will receive. This is the example file. This is also the file and the video that you'll use to actually work out how to use this geometry node. We have made it as simple as possible, but still I think a little bit of explanation is needed. So first of all, let's come in and actually have a look what we've got here. So we can see we've got rain, we've got fog, we've actually got some splatters. And if I put this onto material mode, you can see that we've actually got drips coming down here and we've also got these little kind of circles that appear on the floor. If we move on over as well, we can see over here that we've actually got a ripple effect from our water. So if you want this on something like um, over a river, for instance, or if you want to put this, this plane over the top of something, it's very easy to actually do that because this plane actually has transparency as well. And if I go in now, you'll actually see everything working. Now let's first of all just show you the actual particles because I think they're important. So we can see that we've got two types of particles that you can use. The first one is a lot more stylized, the second one is a little bit more realistic, but you're free to go in and change these particles if you want to. All you need to do is just UV unwrap them to your own actual water drop. Then we've got actually our fog uh, particle, and finally what we've got is our water shader. And this water shader, you can add onto any of your shaders. So let's first of all go in though, before we discuss that one, and discuss how we're gonna set this up. So I'm going to come over to a new scene which I've got here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just bring in a plane. So if we bring in a plane, always remember just to reset your transformations once you've made your plane big enough. Basically, however big you make this, that's how big the rain's gonna be or the area of the rain is gonna come from. So let's just press Control A, all transform, set origin to geometry, add modifier, and we're gonna bring in geometry node. And of course, we're gonna bring in a rain. And it does disappear once we do that. But if we press spacebar now, you will see we've actually got rain. Now I do recommend if you're uh, bringing in rain that you only have one rain within the scene. Sometimes it can get a bit iffy if you do have two rains, so I'm just actually going to delete the other rain. Now let's come in then, and what I wanna do is, I wanna first of all turn down the density, so let's put the density on something like one, and you will see it actually happens in real time. The other thing you're able to do is as well, you're able to animate this as well, so let's say I want my rain, um, starting let's say over here so let's put it over here press the I button and just bring in a keyframe let's then put it at uh, 110 let's move it over here let's press I and bring in a keyframe and now let's start this out and you can see now that it will start moving over to here now it gets a little better than that as well because at the moment we can actually come back to this frame here and what I can also do I can set this to zero hit the little keyframe here, and then I can come over to 110. And what I can do then is press four, hit the little keyframe here, and now let's give that a try as well. So let's bring it over, let's press the space bar. Starts really slow and really, really heavy. So you can see you can actually keyframe this rain as well. So really, really handy. Of course, you can change the wind direction, you can change um, how strong the wind is, so basically how far it's going this way. You can also change the scale of your rain, of course, the scale randomness, and when it's going to finish. So in other words, when it's going to finish here, if I put this, let's say, down to 0.8, you will see that the rain now dies much, much um, further up. So when you want to level it up to your ground, you're actually able to do that. All right, so that's the rain. Now let's go into the next one. So next one we'll discuss is going to be, so geometry node, down arrow, is going to be the splatter. So let's bring in a splatter. Make sure you click it on faces, press the space bar, double tap the A, and there is your splatter. And of course from here as well, all of the same kind of options, especially if you want to turn down the density. So let's put that on 0.5 for instance. Let's also come in then and uh, change the scale down to 0.05 for instance and you can see instantly they change all right so we've got our um, splatter on there of course you can put splatter on the floor as well if you want to um, the only one i wouldn't uh, kind of double up 
is the rain and i wouldn't uh, put too um i wouldn't go too far with the drips actually because they are quite intensive if you've got a good machine you're probably going to get away with putting them everywhere but just use them sparingly and always test them before putting the drips on all right so let's now come uh, to our ground plane and put those on then so add modifier geometry node and we'll bring in the floor splashes like so make sure faces are on and there's our floor splashes now so really really easy is to use them and now what we'll do is we'll come to our drips so if we come to this one here add geometry node and the one i'm going to bring in is drips put it on faces press the space bar double tap the a and there you go there is your drips now you can also see these drips look a little bit different to the uh, raindrops all we need to do then is where it says object so if i just zoom out and I actually click this off, little pipette, click on your rain, and there you go. Now you'll see that rain has actually changed now, and they look like those drips. So now the other thing we can do with these drips is we can come in and we can change the density of them, of course. So let's put it on something like four. And if you want a scene like out of Matrix, you can actually do that if you want to, as you can see. And the other thing you can change is the lifetime. So let's say I put this lifetime on three, for instance. You'll just have to mess around with the speed, but you can already see you can have them going as far as you want. So looking really, really nice. You really have that tunnel effect and water dripping down as well. All right, so that's the actual rain. Now, if we come to our little water droplets now over our water, I will show you how that works. So if we come over here, if I turn on my object mode, you can see that's the kind of effect that you're going to get. So let's come in now, add modifier, geometry node, click the little down arrow. We're gonna bring in water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the things over here. So you can see seven and two on here. So I'm gonna put seven and two. And then what I'm gonna do is come to this one. I'm gonna put 3.70, so 0 0.370. And then what I'm gonna do 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 1.5. I think they're all the same actually. The only ones that are different are these ones, 0.13. 0 0.14, 0 0.11, like so. And let's give that a try. And there we go. We've got our actual uh, rain pull. Now, the next thing I want to do is just to show you, we've got a material in here as well. So if I put this onto my rendered view, let's uh, click the down arrow. And what I'm going to do is bring in water. So I've got our water material here. And here is our water material. Now, the best thing about this water material is if I bring in a cube, so cursor selected, shift A, let's bring in a cube, let's drop the cube down, and let's give it a new material, this cube, let's put it red, you can see that this actual material, if I put this onto cycles, and there you go, you can actually see through there as well, and you can go into this shader and change it, the main thing about this shader is, you're able then to put it over the top of your own actual terrain, and then this will have that rain effect on there. And before we carry on, I think the other thing that I should show you is the actual fog. So I'm just going to get rid of my drips at the moment. And then I'm just going to grab this, press Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A. Let's bring it in a plane. Let's make the plane a little bit bigger, like so. Again, reset all of your transforms, like so. And then all we're going to do is add in the geometry node. And this time, of course, it's going to be fog. And now you can see exactly what that's going to look like. We do have the option to turn it on to Eevee or on two cycles. So depending on which one you turn that on, that's how the shade is gonna be represented. And the best thing about this is we can actually change the height now. We can actually change the uh, scale. We can also change the actual uh, density of the fog. So we can bring that right down, change the density like so. And we can even change the fall off. So how far is it going to the edge of the actual box so you can see really really easy to use again really really easy to get rain clouds in and the option to use it on EV or cycles so what lastly what I want to show you is over here we have a material and this if you click on the little dot button you can see is called rain material now if we go over to our shading panel put this on object mode and then you can see now this is the material so this is how the, all this material is and all it is, is an actual group. Now, within this group, I've actually set um, a few nodes, basically to go over the top of any of your textures or whatever, and then you just need to basically drop it in with the mix shader. So you can just basically grab both of these, copy them, and drop them into your other material. So let's see that actually in action. So what I'm gonna do is just open up my other blend file. And here is my other blend file. And as you can see, before adding this, if I just plug this in, 
this is what this shader looked like. So you can see this is what the shader looks like at the moment. And now if I plug this in at the moment, you'll see nothing happens. But the moment I start to take this down, so if I take this down, take this down, you will see now it actually starts to look wetter. And I've done this with all the materials on here as well. Now, the other beautiful thing about this is you can set this all the way up. And then as we actually press play, you can see it actually drops down. Let me just go to my um, layout so you can actually see that in action. Let's put this on to uh, material mode. Let's put it on to one. And there you go. As in real time, you can see this starts to get wetter, 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 as you can see now, all the way up to 100. So, so something else really, really handy to have. All right, everyone. Last of all, before you go, the last thing is that you really want to make sure that if you are on cycles, you want to come down. And what you want to do is you want to come to where it says um, light paths. Just make sure that the transparency of this is set relatively high. If I set this down to zero and just click on my cycles, you can see we've got lots of artifacts, lots of shadows on here. So what I want to do is I want to set this to around about 25 and then that gets rid of all those and you're not going to end up with those pesky shadows within your scene. All right, everyone. So I really, really hope you enjoyed that one. All of the links will be down below so you can pick this actual geometry node up and add it to your collection. For all of you asking about the Victorian scene, it will be out in February at some point. We're thinking towards the end of February because it is a huge, huge course, but it should be out towards the end of February. And lastly, we've had a complete overall on our Patreon. So if you've not joined our Patreon, or even if you are on our Patreon, go and check it out. The rewards have all been revamped. So hopefully you'll go and check that out. Give us a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you on the next one, everyone. Thanks a lot. Happy modeling.